All right, so what do you do if you're setting up a sound system and you need to get this distance from your alignment position to your main array, for example? Now, this is trivial to do in your modeling software here, but there are a handful of different ways that you could do it in the field, especially if you're in direct sunlight and you're having trouble with a laser disto. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, there's a really powerful triangle solver that I use to do this, and it requires a little bit of math, but I'm gonna try and make it easy and step-by-step -step for you in case it would be helpful for you ever in the field. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with Subaligner, and I'm gonna show you how to just do it with regular old math or a spreadsheet or something like that. Okay, so we've got this sound system here with our two mains, and we've got a sub arc there in the center. Um, and if you guys have seen this article that I wrote, you know that one of my first tips is to get closer, right? But let's say that you don't wanna do that. You still wanna use an alignment position that's back here, not one that's up here. So if you're in the field, you might get back here and you might turn on your laser disto and you might not even be able to see it up here. This happens to me all the time. If you're outdoors, if there's any direct sunlight, um, even indoors sometimes at some distances and the lights are bright and there's nothing reflective on the speaker or maybe they're even behind something like there's a lot of challenges sometimes for using a laser disto. So this all comes from this article, by the way, um, how to set subwoofer delay. Seven top brands agree in this method, aka the relative absolute method. One of the first things you need to do is get those physical distances from the listening position or from your alignment position or whatever. And one of the ways you can do that is with a laser disto. Um, there's various other tools. But as you read this article and you see some of my suggestions, you'll get to this one at number five and number six that involve using a right triangle solver. And uh, I find this to be one of the most useful because sometimes you get closer and you still can't see the laser, or sometimes you can't get closer. Um, sometimes you have a design, but then it changes, or sometimes you don't have a design. Um, sometimes there's nothing shiny, you know, to aim the laser at, and sometimes you just have a shitty laser or, you know, a, a laser disto that doesn't have a camera, or maybe you don't have a tripod to put the camera on. So then you get down to these suggestions and that's what we're gonna try next. So what do I mean by solving a right triangle? Well, anytime I'm trying to get some kind of a distance and I'm having trouble with it, um, what I look for is a way to get that distance in some other way. So I'll draw a triangle on the screen here to show you what I mean, and then I'll go over to the left view here, and I'll draw over it just so it's really clear it's this, so we want this distance here, right? But if we can't get that, if we know this distance and this distance, or um, just this angle inside here, then we can get this orange distance, the hypotenuse. You know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared pretty simple stuff that we all learned in school. And so I'm just gonna be talking here about how to apply it. So first let's look at the simple way. So I'll just open up Subaligner, I'll open up this little calculator, and I'll fill out these boxes here. And let me reset everything so that you can see what it looks like before you open it. So array span, that's this. These See how these are all color coded here. So array span, and then B, and then C. Uh, so array span is the height of the array. And the fastest way to figure that out is from your documentation, right? So a lot of times you'll have a printout that says, this is where the speakers go. And it'll usually include the height of the array. Here in Map3D, I can open this up and I see right down here, it says array span and then array depth. So 4.65 feet, 4.65 feet and array depth is 2.01.
So I have the first two pieces. I need three more pieces of information here. What's this distance from the ground to the bottom of the array? Well, that's not explicit here, but I know the height here is 12 feet, and I know the array span is 4.65 feet. So I just need to know 12 minus 4.65, which is 7.35. So 7.35 feet to the bottom of the array, and then the distance of front of house, the distance to front of house, that's just this line here. And I know that my microphone is at 72 feet. Um, but uh, I'll put a video right here, I'll insert it to show you how you can do this in the field. Hey, just a quick tip about uh, laser distance measurements for alignment. If you're trying to measure something like this from way over there and you're having a tough time because of the sunlight and because you have a cheap laser disto like I do, um, then one option, if you really want to get to that depth, because, you know, my first tip is just to get closer, but if you really want to get at that depth, if you put a target on the ground like this, something reflective, something easy to see, and then you put your laser disto on the ground, or of course you could do this with a tripod if you have that. You put your laser disto on the ground and you turn the camera on, then you can sort of stabilize this so that it's pointing at that piece of paper. And then the next time you actually enable the laser, and you won't be able to see it in this camera, I guess, but then you can see the laser and then you can actually get an accurate measurement. So you might be wondering, if I can't get this distance, how would I be able to get this distance? Well, believe it or not, I found that it's a lot easier to get this distance sometimes. Why? Number one, because you can sometimes just stand under the array and you can measure back to front of house and uh, you could like tape a piece of paper to your console or sometimes there's a tent or something. Sometimes that measurement is easier to get. Put your disto on the ground also so that it's stable. And then you can aim back to something uh, like a piece of paper attached to a chair. Okay, so that distance is 72 feet, 72 feet. And then you just need to choose whether your audience is sitting or standing in this case. Mine is sitting, and then we get an answer here. 71.22 feet. Notice how far back we are. It's so similar to that measurement anyway. Uh, that's partly because I'm measuring so far back, right? Of course, these two lines are going to be very similar, um, but also these speakers are fairly low. If these speakers were way up here, then this line might be uh, significantly longer. Okay, so that's how you can figure it out in Subaligner. And now let's take a look at how you could do this math on your own so you don't need Subaligner or in case you don't have Subaligner, whatever. We can figure it out together. So the result that we want is that triangle's hypotenuse, right? So I'm just gonna write, uh, we know A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm just gonna write C equals A squared plus b squared, just to see if I have my math right here. And then I know we need to apply the square root here. And I can make this bigger. Okay, so let's just insert some values here to see if this is working. So I'll just say one and two. Great. So this looks like it's working, and then I could check this with any other triangle calculator on the internet, right? If you just Google solve right triangle, you'll get one from Google. So if you put a semicolon here at the end of these lines, you'll suppress the output um, because we need to know this side of the triangle A and this side of the triangle B. Now B was pretty easy, right? That's just this distance that we measured directly somehow. So I'll go ahead and put that in as 72. We know that. This one up here is a little bit more complicated, right? So I think the easy distance to get is just this, this one from the ground. So we can measure this to the bottom of our speakers 
and maybe it'll be more clear if I do this. This to the bottom of the speakers. Okay, and I put that into my calculator earlier. What did I put in this one? 7.35 feet is this distance here. So let's figure out how to use that over here in math. So let's say, let's just call this distance to bottom of array equals 7.35, 7.35 feet. Then I need to, the rest of the way then, once I've gotten up here, then I just need to know to the center of the array. So if I zoom in a little bit, what I need to know is the half of the array span, basically, right? And we saw earlier that I can know the array span. So if I just select my array here and I go here, I see array span is 4.65 feet. So maybe I say array span equals 4.65 feet. And then I can say half of array span equals array span divided by two. And we can just double check that that looks correct. Okay. So then ultimately what my A side is going to be here is the distance to the bottom of the array plus half of the array span. 72.64, did we get there already? Let's double check. Not exactly the same number. And that's because there's one more thing that's taken into account here. Notice how um, a lot of times we are not, if we measure directly to the bottom of the array, that means we're standing directly under it. So we're not actually directly under this point. So there's a small value here that we can account for. And that it would be half of this array depth value. So we can take this array depth, which is 2.01 feet. So let's maybe do it like this. Array depth, 2.01 feet, and then half of array depth, 2.01 feet divided by two. And double check that, that's one, that's great. So now we know that our B side is this value here, which remember, I know I drew it like a perfect triangle here, but remember we're actually measuring from directly below the array. So we're like trying to figure out this distance here. So that's going to be um, that distance 72 minus half of the array depth. Okay, then we get 71.65, which is uh, much closer to this value that we got here. Why it's not exactly the same, uh, I would have to go back and verify all these numbers, but you can see that we're getting very close here. So, you know, you don't have to be this accurate depending on what you're doing, but I'm just showing you how you could build your own calculator here so that anytime you need to find this value and you're having trouble getting it with your laser dista or whatever, you have another way to do it if you need to. If this value is important to you, then you won't mind opening up this calculator that you created and then you remember, okay, I just need to know this value. I'll put in the array span, the depth, and then I have this distance to my alignment position, and then I can calculate that hypotenuse. And there it is. Now, the other method I wanted to talk about is what if you only know this angle? Well, you need to know two pieces of the triangle. So if you know this angle and then maybe you know this height, then how could we figure that out? Um, well, again, you could use any triangle solver, but the situation is here um, that if you are standing here and you have your laser disto on a tripod or something stable, um, or, you know, any inclinometer, I'm just saying that because my laser disto, for example, has a little inclinometer 
on it, and a lot of them do. So, but let's just say that you have a inclinometer, maybe even something like your phone. If you can get it stable enough, and you can get a super high-powered laser or the camera on the laser disto or some way to make sure that you're actually pointed here, if you can get that angle, then that may be easier for you than the method we described earlier where you have this distance and that distance. So let's look at how you could do that. Um, again, you could open up any triangle solver, but if you um, want to have this all together in your own spreadsheet or your own math notepad, that's probably a smart way to do it. Um, so that inner angle we could call alpha, and we could say maybe that inner angle is 7.6 degrees or something. So I'll just put a reminder here that this is degrees. And then to calculate this, um, again, we're just trying to find C. So that's going to be A, that A side that we calculated before, divided by the sine of alpha. And this doesn't look correct, right? Because we know that it should be 71.65 or similar, right? Something close to 72. Um, and the reason is because this is expecting alpha to be in radians. So we can calculate alpha in radians just by taking alpha and multiplying it by pi over 180. Okay, and that gives us this value here. And then we can remind ourselves, well, it's in the name. So I'll just copy this, put this into the formula, and now we have something very close to this, right? And I calculated this um, with a triangle solver earlier just so I could use it. Um, but again, in the field, you would have an inclinometer or something there. So those are two ways that you can use to find uh, the distance in the field in case you need to use this for alignment or whatever your purposes are. Uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, I'd love to know any calculations that you find helpful in the field. You know, maybe there are some more calculators that I could build into Subaligner to make it even more useful for myself or other people. Or maybe you have some nice measurement tricks uh, that I could use to update this article. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.